I want to start by thanking the Supreme Court for its unanimous decision today. It was a very important decision. We're very well crafted. And I think it will go a long way toward bringing our country together. Right now at 430, just one day before more than a dozen states will vote in their primary contest, the Supreme Court has ruled that former President Donald Trump can't stay on the ballot in the state of Colorado. The Republican frontrunner calling today's decision a victory. Queen City News is covering every angle of this story from right here in the Queen City to the Capitol. We go now to Washington correspondent Raquel Martin live from Capitol Hill. And Raquel, this decision was unanimous. That's right, and it didn't take long for the Supreme Court to hand this down. They actually just heard arguments uh, less than a month ago. In the end, they determined that this should be something that the federal government, not states, should be weighing in on. In a unanimous decision, the U.S. Supreme Court overruled the Colorado State Supreme Court, which had decided Donald Trump was not eligible to be president because he engaged in an insurrection on January 6. It's a very important decision. We're very well crafted. Trump calls the ruling, which ends similar efforts to remove him from the ballot in Illinois and Maine, a big win for America. The voters can take the person out of the race very quickly, but... A court shouldn't be doing that. In the opinion, all nine Supreme Court justices agreed only the federal government, not an individual state, has the power to determine if a president is qualified for office. Can't be done by a patchwork of state decisions. George Washington University law professor Paul Shiv Berman says the decision sidesteps the court issue. Did the former president engage in an insurrection on January 6? This case does not tell us anything about that. The ruling comes on the eve of a consequential Super Tuesday, where Republicans in 15 states will vote for their party's candidate for president. While campaigning in Texas, Trump's primary opponent, Nikki Haley, told supporters she agrees with the high court's ruling. Look, I'll defeat Donald Trump fair and square, but I want him on that ballot. The conservative justices are punting this issue to Congress. They say lawmakers uh, need to pass new legislation clarifying the laws determining who's eligible for president. For now in Washington, Raquel Martin, back to you. Queen City News and Chief Legal Analyst Khalif Rhodes is here with us now to weigh in on this. So first of all, Khalif, were you surprised by the justices ruling? Here? Um, a mixed bag of emotions, I can say. Let's talk about what it says and what it doesn't say. It doesn't say that the former president did not engage in insurrection. It does not say that that he cannot be removed from balance. What it does say, and that's the part that kind of surprises me, um, not the fact that they said that he has to be removed only by states. What surprised me is that they went on to lay out how and why he could be removed in the process, how Congress can do that. In this 20-page opinion, that's the part that probably surprised me the most. I thought ultimately that there was a 50-50 a chance that they could. The unanimous, unanimous decision also probably surprised me, but you also, that's kind of a mixed bag because while all, I think, showed that they agreed, there was a concurring opinion by three of the liberal justices. And so that portion was something that I showed, which they agreed with what I'm saying, that they went too far. While they totally agreed that he could not be removed by states, mm -hmm. they wanted to make it clear that they did not agree with the court's rationale on how the government had to get through and the mechanisms that they laid out for Congress to follow. They thought that was too far. Well, speaking of that unanimous ruling, how rare is that to find? Extremely rare. I mean, especially in these polarizing times that we live in now where you have everyone that's teeming to seeming to try to jockey for position and stay on their proverbial hill and not want to move one inch. But I do think that this was a political show of force, which is also a rare thing for the Supreme Court, because typically they want to avoid political issues. They want to avoid issues that could have political controversy. They can normally punt and not even hear the case. Now, on this one, they punted on the issue and didn't really address whether or not he engaged in insurrection, but they addressed head on, could he be removed or couldn't he be removed? And that was something, at least I think they did. The, the problem that I think that we're going forward is Amy Coleman Bryant, who wrote the opinion, her, her issue was that she didn't like the three justices taking the issue and making the political stance. And I think down the road, those type of comments will lead to further division within this court. She said, yeah, you can agree, but we don't want to make it a politicized event. Well, this is already politicized. We're talking about the highest office in the country. And so you can't delegitimize their comments and also trying to take a jab at them for making a point, which she said she agreed to. She just didn't sign on to their concurrent opinion. 
Well, speaking of down the road, do you think this ever comes up again now that the Supreme Court has had their say? In? I, I think it's pretty straightforward. I mean, it, now if this wants to occur where the 14th Amendment is used to remove a person from the ballot, it would have to be done on the federal level. And I mean, and I clearly understand their rationale that this is something that we don't want individual one-off states making decisions on who should be on the ballot um, for the president. But it is kind of confusing because they already do that for a number of races in their own states. If you don't meet eligibility guidelines in that specific state, the board of directors or the board of elections in that individual state will make a determination if you're on the ballot or not. And so while I do understand and appreciate their rationale, it was a kind of a mixed bag of approach in terms of states are already doing what they were attempting to do here. They determine who's on their ballot already. Well, certainly a, a big decision today from the highest court in our nation um, as this uh, election season only gets more and more interesting. Kali, thank you.